Hey, and welcome to New Horizons Designs on YouTube. This is a community-driven sewing channel where you will find all kinds of fun, valuable content to implement into your craft practice. I'm Kate, and today I'm gonna to be sharing how to use the Summit Peak Zip Up Hoodie to create a back zip costume. I chose a cute and cuddly bunny for this outfit. Before we get started, it'd be great if you could take a second and hit that red subscribe button if you haven't already. It really helps YouTubers like us evolve and create more great content that our viewers are looking for. Now let's get started. I'm using the Summit Peak design because of its zip front feature, but you could easily use any of our other awesome patterns to get a similar effect. Maybe you even want to mash a couple together to get the perfectly customized costume. We have a great video on our YouTube channel showing how to combine patterns and you can check it out right here or down in the description box when you're finished with this video. All right, so the pieces I'm gonna be using for this tutorial are front piece A, front piece B, the back piece, the sleeve, and the hood. That's it. I'll be leaving off the cuffs, waistband, and pockets, but if your design calls for those, definitely use them. This video is meant to trigger your creativity and give you some inspiration for those last minute Halloween costumes this year. There really are no rules, so feel free to think big. Don't forget to tag us on Instagram so we can see your makes in action. Since this costume is going to be worn backwards, there's a few adjustments we need to make. The most important adjustment is going to be to the hood to accommodate for the zipper to zip all the way up. To do this, we kind of just need to square off the part that would normally be open to the face. I'm just gonna draw a line from that bottom neck piece up to the center of the hood. Now, once you construct this, you might find that this little neck chin piece that sticks out here sticks out in the back of your costume. When you're constructing it and doing your fit tests, you can just kind of trim away excess and that will lie a little better in the end. Okay, next we're gonna make this a three-piece hood. This isn't necessary, but in my opinion, it adds a nicer finish and if you're adding things like ears, you're gonna want a seam to stick them into. To do this, simply measure right on your child's head to decide how wide you want that center panel to be. I want mine to be a finished section of four inches and of course we need to add seam allowance to either long edge. So two times three eighths, which is our seam allowance. That means I need a four and three quarter inch wide piece of fabric. So cut a long strip of paper, the width that we just determined. So in my case, four and three quarter inches wide and the length is gonna depend on the size of the pattern that you're using. To determine this, you can just measure from that front part of the hood all the way down the back curve to the neck where it meets the bodice of the sweater. If you do this before the next step, then your piece is gonna be a little bit long, but that's okay, we can trim it after. And this is now your center hood panel piece. Now because we are adding four inches to the center of the hood, we need to reduce the side pieces by an equal amount in the width. The important thing to remember here is that our pattern piece for the hood is only half of the hood. So we need to divide our four inch addition number by two, giving us two inches. We're using the pre-seam allowance number because we're referring to finished measurements in this case. Now you can use a seam gauge or a ruler to make even marks along the curve of the hood all the way along. I'm making mine at two inches because that's what I am reducing my width by. Your measurement might be different. And we don't need to add or subtract seam allowance here because this pattern piece already has it built in. That curve that you just drew, go ahead and trim that off. And I'm also just gonna round off the corner a little bit more. It adds for a nicer finish. I'm using this fancy curved ruler, but you can just freehand it if you don't have one. I also need to draft myself a bunny ear pattern piece and I am just gonna freehand this from looking at a Google search. Before we get into the last of the adjustments, go ahead and hit the subscribe and like buttons if you are enjoying this video so that we know to make more hack tutorials like this one. The next two adjustments are totally optional and dependent on your design. The Summit hoodie features a two-piece front panel design. I think this would be great for a lot of costumes like maybe a skunk or a dinosaur dinosaur but for my costume I want a solid front so I'm just going to combine front piece A with front piece B to do this I'm just 
overlapping the pieces and taping them together. If we were sewing this, you'd be lining up the top point and the bottom point and then easing in around the curve because we don't need to worry about that. Just line up with that top shoulder point seam and then we can trim off the bottom if there's excess after. I'm only going to overlap about a quarter inch because I want this to be as roomy as possible. If you want to keep the original size intact with the original seam allowance, you're going to overlap three quarters of an inch to allow for seam allowance removal. And then just trim the bottom if necessary. I'm also going to widen the sleeve to make it less fitted. To do this, I'm just drawing lines straight down from the underarm seam out to where the hem is, but I'm adding about 5 eighths of an inch on the bottom there out from the hem on either side. Finally, I want to add some length to the overall costume to accommodate a little bunny tail. So I'm just taping on some paper to the bottom, adding as much as I think I need, and and keeping in mind my zipper length as well as hem allowance. Now, you can always trim off more after, so adding a little more isn't gonna hurt anything. If you're printing at home, you can use the layers to select a larger size to use as your length line, then it's right on your pattern pieces and you don't have to go through this extra step, you just cut your extra length when you're cutting out your pattern piece. If you want more information on PDF patterns, check out this video. All right, now it's time to cut the fabric. I am using a fleece for the main garment, as well as a little bit of interfacing in the ears, and then felt for the facial features. I did choose to size up a few times for this costume because the fabric I'm using doesn't meet the stretch requirements and because I want this to fit over a snowsuit if necessary. If you're not sure which fabric to use for your costume or you have a few different ones in mind, you could always do a fabric mock-up. Yep, we have a video for that too. The rest of the steps are fairly straightforward and you can use the instructions that are given in your pattern to complete the zip hoodie, but if you are making it a back zip costume, there are a few things you're going to want to keep in mind. For the hood, you want to make sure that you're attaching that center panel to the same place on both hoods. So I like to start at the front piece and attach one side all the way down and then when I'm attaching the second side, I also started at the front, line everything up, and then if I need to trim anything off, it will be trimmed off at the back there. This also means that your hood isn't going to be wonky if the center panel piece is longer and you sew one side panel from the front and then the other side panel lines up with the back. And don't forget to add in any ears in your hood seams if that is what your costume calls for. Now to extend the zipper all the way up so it covers the entire face and head, you're going to just attach that zipper all the way up the sides of the hood. You might choose to do like I did and tuck in that center panel of the hood for a cleaner look. Now remember, I chose not to do a waistband or cuffs, but for the sleeves, I actually ended up making little mitts because they were long enough to accommodate that. So all I did when the garment was wrong side out, I just traced a little mitt and then sewed along the outline, notched the curves and turned it out and it turned out really good. Now I'm embellishing as necessary to fit the costume demands. An applique tummy and palm circles, a handmade pom-pom tail, and felt facial features completed my Halloween bunny. I chose to make holes for the eyes and the mouth since I'm using fleece and felt, they're not gonna fray, but you could also add something like pantyhose nylon or mesh if you want a less transparent look. And hopefully you're better at recreating facial features than I am. Here is the final reveal. lot of fun daydreaming up all the ideas that you could use for this hack. I really like that it adds flexibility to decorate the front of the costume since the zipper is in the back. And aside from the skunk and dinosaur that I already mentioned, some other ideas I had were movie characters like Hi Hi, Scooby, 
a minion, or even Patrick Star from Spongebob. I was also thinking of a dolphin, a cow, or a wolf, a banana, a clown, or almost any superhero costume. Thanks so much for spending a little bit of time with me over here at New Horizons. I can't wait to see what you create with this reverse zip up tutorial. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tag us on Instagram. Have a great, safe Halloween, and I'll see you soon. Bye.